Neverwinter 2021 Main Stats Explained for New Players. Make sure you stab that like button as we start. This Neverwinter video is about the new main stats explained for new or returning players in 2021. This channel helps new, newer, and casual Neverwinter players. You can definitely still enjoy playing Neverwinter even without all of the BIS or top of the line gear. And if you're returning to Neverwinter, then welcome to a game you don't recognize. One of my great regular visitors to this channel, Hillbilly Trollop, wanted to know a little bit more about the changes to the combat powers. He started a new character recently and found the experience to be a bit confusing and ask that yours truly help players like him out. In this Neverwinter video about the new Mod 20 Shardar changes taking place in 2021, or main stats explained for new players, I'll break things down for you. I'll go through the main combat stats and give you some tips as to what general areas you want to concentrate on to build your stats, depending on the class of character you use. And I'll talk to you about companions mounts, and boons. As we get started here, I want to make sure you know that whether you're on a PC or console, when Cryptic releases a new mod like Neverwinter's Mod 20 New Sharndar, there are always at least some changes, and these changes are an ongoing process, because they will look at different things like character abilities, artifact weapon stats, and damage, artifacts, weapon enchantments, armor enchantments, mountain insignia, powers, and if you don't know what this stuff is, I apologize for jumping ahead. And we'll hopefully clarify things by saying the game's programmers will look at the changes that were made to the game and typically make adjustments and sometimes big adjustments to the characters and equipment players are using that far exceed other items or even other characters within the game. This is a little caution for you. So as a new Neverwinter player, you don't want to go out there and spend your money or game currency like crazy until you have a little experience in Neverwinter. And if you find that you're unhappy with the character, you can always add more character slots to try out others or delete one and start again. Different character classes and Paragon Paths also can have an impact on your overall character. But I want to keep this focused on the main combat stats in general with some suggestions for you. And if you have other comments or questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. This channel supports open discussions. Now that you know at least some basic broad facts about why things are changed in Neverwinter, we can take a look at the character screen here and I'll go down from the top. Your total item level is something Neverwinter programmers have been changing for some time. They've been working on ways to make item levels relevant to the gameplay. Currently, the item level is an overall rating. It's kind of like you reach level 80, as you can see down here, this character's level 80. But the game, but Neverwinter, is really just beginning because now you're going to forget your character leveling and you look at your total item level. Your total item level is based upon all the enchantments and equipment including companions and mounts that you have equipped in the game. The higher your total item level is, the higher your maximum hit points will be and the higher your base damage and healing will be. Before continuing, you should know, I have another video recently made called Neverwinter's 12 Tips for New Players in 2021 that goes into more general detail about different aspects of Neverwinter. And if you're new, you should definitely watch that too. You can click on the link at the end of this video after you're done watching this one, and I'll put a link down in the description below under my affiliate links. After an item level, Neverwinter has maximum hit point, which is how much damage you can take before your demise. <laughs> Different character classes currently have different base bonuses, and if you're a tank, you want a lot of hit points because your party can't afford for you to die, because your job is to attract the mobs and bosses so your DPS players can safely wipe them out. You will want equipment, companions, and mounts to help increase this amount. Hopefully, when you run a challenging dungeon, you have a good healer to keep you alive, and a great tank to keep the masses of enemies and bosses occupied while you attack. And if you play as a DPS character, you want to do your job dodging and staying out of the red zones. So your healer isn't pulling their hair out, but you also need to use your potions appropriately, along with your healer's help, to help keep you alive. But damage per second characters are often glass cannons that can do a tremendous amount of damage, but die horribly fast if cornered or blasted during a dungeon boss battle. But I think you get maximum hit points now. Damage is your base damage, or your total item level divided by 10. 
a DPS and a healer player get a damage bonus to the base damage. And once you reach level 80, while you don't actually get to 81, you get a bonus from the experience points earned that you can claim. And they stack, so you can collect them in bulk. And at least as of this video, you can get Astro Diamonds, Refining Points, and other random goodies from claiming these rewards. Like this one. Now we get to main stats. These stats change and are affected in a lot of ways that are similar to your total item level. So you'll want to find different types of equipment, enchantments, companions and mounts to increase your ratings and total percentages to get them where you want them to be. And I'll have a little bit more about companions and mounts in a bit. The class of your character and your paragon paths can also impact this. If you're a DPS or damage per second character, the upper portion is the area you'll want to concentrate on. So all this up here. Power increases damage in the amount of healing you do. It's also important for healers to have critical strike and critical severity down here. For new player, the specific percentages on these when combined with equipment, companions, gear, and mounts might seem a bit confusing, but it really isn't too bad. And I'll keep things simple because there's already a lot for you to have been taken in just to play the game. With power, the closer you have your power to your total item level, the better off you'll be. For every 1,000 points below your item level, you'll lose 1% as a contribution to your overall percentages. To so just focus on getting your power close to your overall item level. And power is good for all classes. So the closer to 90% you can get this, the better off you'll be. And as you can see, my character doesn't have 90% in power. In fact, none of my stats are capped, but I can still play Neverwinter's content and enjoy it. The harder you hit, the more likely it is that you'll maintain aggro. Or for example, if you have aggro, it means that a boss is paying attention to you because you slapped them hard. DPS characters do more damage and healing characters heal more with more power. And I also want to mention, if you're thinking about setting up a gaming or another type of YouTube channel, I do have some product affiliate links for products I regularly use to make videos or that I've checked out and recommend. And I'm not just trying to sell these things, I really do use them and I'm on a tight budget. So I feel like the prices are pretty good. And I've made some review videos for some of these. In full disclosure, I'll also earn a small commission if you buy something by clicking on the links, but it will be at no additional cost to you. And it helps to support this channel, so thank Thank you. And as I go through the rest of the main stats, the same is true of all stats. So for every 1,000 points below your total item level, you'll have 1% less in your percentage column. And I hope that makes sense. Accuracy is basically used when you attack something and it's deflected. It's the amount of damage that's still taken. So it's a deflect, not a miss. And right now, 90% in any of these stats is the ideal amount because they are capped at 90%. And if it's higher, you lose out. If it's lower than 90%, it's also less useful because you again lose 1% for every 1,000 points below your total item level. Accuracy in main stats is probably the least important of your main stats. So if you need to sacrifice some percentage points in your main stats, pick accuracy at least at the time of this video. And I'll try to update this later if something changes. Combat advantage, basically, let's say your companion is in front of a demon you're fighting and you're behind it. Since you're attacking from behind, you'll have combat advantage and you'll do more damage than if you fought toe to toe. The combat advantage is another stat that's very useful for DPS classes and tanks. Because as a DPS class, you do more damage and for tanks, it helps generate more aggro by also helping with damage. Critical strike is just the chance that you'll land a solid hit for damage damage or heal or do healing. So this is useful whether you're using a sword, a spell, or a ranged attack. Then critical severity increases the amount of damage or healing you do if you hit with a critical strike. The numbers you see in orange here are critical hit damage. The yellow numbers are non-critical hit damage, just so you're aware of that. And of course, if you're new and watching this, you're not going to have your total percentages at 90%. And that's just a fact, but it's okay. Just try to have a balance and keep your power, combat advantage, critical strike, critical severity with accuracy trailing. I have power at the highest right now, my DPS characters, just because of equipment that I already had from the last mod. So I had things set up this way. And as I move forward, I'll start to drop power a little bit and get my combat advantage and critical strike up a bit. Now more about stats in a moment. But I also have a video showing you how to get on something called Neverwinter preview server and if you're a PC player you can import your character and test out different equipment and enchantments but 
it doesn't transfer back to the main or live gate. And since you're new, this might be a bit much for now, but I wanted to let you know it exists. Next up is defense. For tanks, defense is very important. So if you're a tank, you definitely want to try to get this close to 90%, or as close to 90% as you can. But you also want high numbers in power and combat advantage, like I talked about a moment ago. You do want some balance here. Sometimes, like if you like to solo campaigns as DPS, you don't want to have too low of a defense if you're having trouble with damage, causing you to respawn often. Some of the equipment you have may have some bonuses to the upper and lower portion of your combat stats, and players will often experiment by keeping different sets in the inventory or in a loadout. Basically another build you can switch to at a campfire, and they're most often used before a boss battle. You want to try to get equipment that properly distributes what stats you need and the areas you need help with. So for example, sometimes you might have a piece of equipment that has a couple of defensive bonuses with another type of special equipment bonus. Like this one helps me out with my action points whenever I hit with a critical strike. But you can switch those around and it's okay because as you move forward you can change out your equipment as you continue exploring in Neverwinter to help balance your stats out. If you're surviving without too much trouble you can look for something that doesn't have defensive stats or something like this that doesn't have deflection and awareness and go for another piece of equipment that has more combat like additional critical severity and combat advantage like this. But you can swap those around as you play. And this group here is for defensive stats. So as a tank, you want as much defense and as many hit points as you can get, and then you can concentrate on awareness. It will reduce the amount of damage you take, especially from bosses. And bosses have combat advantage bonuses 100% of the time, and at all angles. It'll help keep you alive if you have this set at a higher percentage. And when you fight a boss, you staying alive is very important to your group. And with critical avoidance, it lessens the amount of damage you take from a critical strike. Deflect increases the likelihood that you'll not take a direct hit. And deflect severity decreases the amount of damage you take from a deflected damage. And DPS players right now, you can keep these close to your base levels. Your group tank will track the heavy attacks from the bosses. And your healer will put your group's body parts back together as you go. Or at least we hope they do. <laughs> these are the main combat stats you'll want to be concerned with. The stats below here that you want to pay attention to are forte. Really for all players. It gives you additional bonuses that change along with the Paragon Path you select. If you're a healer, outgoing healing is important, or if you're a struggling DPS or tank, incoming healing can help. The rest of the stats below do have some impact, like action point gain and recharge speed, but I don't want to go too long on this. I wanted to concentrate on the upper portion of the main stats and give you a general idea of what's happening here. As I mentioned a little bit ago, your companions have an impact on your abilities too. You can check out my video about whether you should use an active or augmented companion for more information about this. And I'll drop a link below for that, or you can click on the link above. But you can select different companion bonuses that help support the stats that you need and don't have enough of. And your companions don't have to be an active companion or your summon companion to give you bonuses. Like I currently have perfect vision equipped here. But if you look at the different stats, they all contribute to different stats that you just saw in my main character sheet there. So I can change this by clicking and choosing a different companion enhancement. And that will help me out with some of my stats on my character sheet we just went over. And these bonuses will stay with you as you play. And then we have mounts. And when you go to your stable, you can see what insignia bonuses you have and how they help you, if you have insignias at this point. But like companions, different mounts can give you different extra combat powers and insignia bonuses that can help increase your Neverwinter combat stats. I also have a recent video with some mount buying tips you can watch, and I'll drop a link to that down below in the description. It's more for players with a bit more in-game income than you probably have at this point. But it'll give you some things to think about. And one more thing I want to touch on, and it's one reason to go through the campaign, is that you can acquire boons by completing campaigns. And they can be selected to help. And different boons have different stats that can help out with your numbers and percentages too. But this is a basic video, and each character class has other more specific things that apply to them. But this video will at least give you an understanding of how to work within the main combat stats. As a new player, I know this can be overwhelming, especially when you consider you have companions, mounts, gear, and artifact sets. I I recommend you take it slow and remember it's just a game and have some fun. Don't spend actual money on the game until you're sure you're going to like it. And I have other videos you can take a look at to help you out in your long game or to get in-game currency like Astro Diamonds and Zen. And these will help you out tremendously as you spend more time in Neverwinter. And I have a lot more to come. So you can subscribe for more great Neverwinter content.